Welcome back. In this video, we're going to get started with Bootstrap 4. We're going to set up our document. It's very, very similar to working with Bootstrap 3, uh, but there is a new JavaScript library we need to include. So let's go to the docs and click on Get Started. So like always, uh, we can download the files and include them ourselves, but it's a lot easier and faster uh, to just use a CDN where we don't have to download the files and we can just quickly copy and paste the code we need this, uh, to make a starter template. And that's what we're going to do. So if we break down what we actually need, we need the reference to the bootstrap file, of course, and I'm, it's currently 4.1.3 is the latest stable. Whatever version you are on, if this is in the future and it changes to 4.2, then this link will reflect that. So we could copy this ourselves and put it into a document as well as these three files or these three JavaScript scripts. And these need to be in a particular order. The first one is jQuery, which we needed for Bootstrap 3 anyway. The next one is called Popper, which we'll talk about where it comes into play, but it has to do with pop-ups and drop-downs and a couple of uh, different components in Bootstrap 4. And then we have the actual Bootstrap JavaScript files. So we need all three of these included if we want to have the full range of JavaScript functionality. Now, remember that to use the JavaScript components does not mean that you have to be a JavaScript developer. It's just that these need to be here in order to make some of those components work, like a dropdown or like the collapse of the nav bar. And you can click here to see all the different pieces, the different components that actually use the JavaScript. So if you don't need any of these, if you don't want an image carousel or a dropdown or a nav bar, then you could forego this entirely. Anyway, what I like to do to start is just copy their starter template. So copy this over and I'm going to move to an editor and this is uh, going to be a little controversial here. I'm not using sublime text. Instead, I'm using something else called VS code, visual studio code. And I thought about maybe I should just use sublime text and go get my old computer uh, and use this exact same setup as before so that it's cohesive for my students. And that's actually how we started recording this section. But then I thought that I was sort of um, deceiving you because I prefer VS Code these days. It's not amazingly better than Sublime, but it's just what I've been using. And I didn't think it... it I, I thought that it was uh, deceptive and also uh, did you a disservice if I just hid the fact that there's a tool I prefer. So again, it's not a huge upgrade, uh, but I do like this. It's called VS Code, Visual Studio Code. It's free. It's uh, updated a lot. It has a big team behind it, unlike Sublime, and it's actually free. There is no trial that is asking you to pay. I feel bad about that. Uh, it's completely free, but it's just a text editor. So this is what it looks like. I have a folder here where I'll be working in, and right now I have a subfolder called Getting Started, and it's empty. I'm going to put a new file in that folder. Okay, and I'm just gonna call it index.html, save, and I'm gonna paste that starter template in. So you can see it looks very, very similar to Sublime. There's no difference in the functionality as far as we're concerned here. We're just typing code and saving, and then we can go over here and open up our new Bootstrap app. <laughs> app is a bit uh, of the wrong term, but we now have Bootstrap 4 included. And if we wanted to test it out to make sure that something you know, that we're actually using Bootstrap for. Let's go grab one of these components and let's take something that wasn't necessarily part of Bootstrap 3, like a card. So let's just take this markup right here. This is what a card looks like. We're going to come back in a separate video. But if we copy this markup and I come into the body here and paste it in and save, now if we go take a look and refresh the page, we have this card. Now it's gross and ugly, it's all on the side, it's not centered, there's no spacing, but this is Bootstrap 4. And let's do one other thing that makes uh, that takes advantage of the JavaScript to make sure that it's working. So we could do a drop-down menu, for example, if we wanted to. Let's just copy the markup for the very first drop-down that we see. It should work like this. And if we included the JavaScript correctly, and we add this component in, and save, and go back, refresh the page, it's working. So if those JavaScript files weren't there at the bottom, then that would not be working. As you can see here, I refresh the page, it does not work. Anyway, so we'll undo that. 
And I'm going to leave it here, uh, leave this video off here. We're not really, we didn't talk about any syntax or anything. Uh, we just added a component that is only Bootstrap 4, and we added in some JavaScript related component to make sure that the scripts are working. And we are now good to go uh, to actually start learning the individual pieces and components in Bootstrap 4.